With that, Matt, we'll turn it over to you for your presentation on the budget. Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us. I have a, a brief presentation on the uh, fiscal year 2016 town budget. So a little bit of the, about the budget process. Uh, the budget process starts first with the departments preparing budget plans that they ultimately will submit to my office, which uh, I then begin a review process with each individual department to go over what their needs are. Yes. Uh, once that's completed, I can put all the numbers together and uh, submit the proposed budget, according to the charter, to uh, the council. This year, uh, that was on March 16th. Um, once it's in the hands of the council, they then uh, have a number of meetings with the different departments and go over what their proposal is. And they hear not just what I have put in the budget, but also their other needs that were not funded as part of the budget. Once that is complete, we go into uh, a public hearing on the town manager's budget. And that's coming up and I'll have a calendar that gets into that in a second. And then following the uh, public hearing, council goes right into deliberation which is actually the next day after the, the uh, public hearing on the budget that council begins talking about what the final budget will look like. And then they adopt the budget and it goes into effect July 1st, 2015. So this is kind of the calendar of all those different events. See, we start way back in November with the departments, and May 16th, the uh, budget submitted to council for their review. Today, April 23rd, is our community conversation. It's a little bit later this year than normal. Um, next week on the 29th, which is a Wednesday at JFK, we have the public hearing that will be held in the auditorium. And then May starts, actually, April, starts the uh, council deliberations on the budget. And then by May 18th <coughs> this year, council has to have the budget adopted. If they fail to adopt the budget, the uh, budget I'm discussing tonight actually goes into effect. Then of course, July 1st, starts our new fiscal year. So there are, there's always uh, different influences on the budget that oh. tells us some of the steps that we have to take to create a balanced budget and by charter and by the state, we have to prepare and pass the budget that revenues and expenditures balance. This year, uh, we have some spiking going on in a number of different areas. Uh, employee health insurance benefits uh, are scheduled or projected to uh, go up by 15%, unfortunately, this year, uh, which is in, I think, the five plus years that we have been self-funded, this is the largest increase that we've seen. Generally, it's uh, under the 10%, uh, generally in the rate of five or less. Uh, if you attended any of our meetings last year for the budget, I talked about we're getting ready to see some of the highest uh, debt payments over the next two or three years. And so this starts the spiking of that. Um, in total, we're looking at about 1.1, almost $1.2 million dollars and additional costs to retire the debt that we've been going into since way back when. Um, I think actually next year is when that spikes at the, the highest end. Although with the uh, high school project, with the roads project that was passed, we're going to see that another spike coming up about three to four years out. And then uh, we did increase the amount of money going into the capital improvement fund. This is due to a lot of the capital needs, whether it's uh, roads, the uh, equipment that we need, the vehicles, and uh, some capital projects I'll talk about here in a little bit. Also, uh, pension increases. Uh, the actuarial people changed the uh, calculations to make it more in line, more realistic and accurate for us to uh, budget properly. But in doing that quickly increased what our contributions on a annual basis is. And uh, that spikes up by $462,000 this year. The last two things on this slide here. Stowe School, um, we're bringing that back online for a number of years. That has been actually rented uh, by prep for their high school until their new building opened up earlier this, this school year. And uh, so we are turning it in, in partnership with the Board of Education, into the Early Childhood Learning Center. But doing that, that effectively becomes a full functioning school. So we're going to be paying the utilities as well as the custodial staffing costs to keep that open. Tricaster just went down again. 
But then uh, on the positive side, we have uh, actually registered a, a little bit larger increase of the grant list. That's 0.9% yeah, like last year, about 0.2%. But on the positive side, that generates about 700,000 or so uh, extra dollars that, uh, that helps relieve some of the need to uh, increase. Yeah, the, keep it in mind, everyone's a wife. You just tap that. Base, and that'll the focus of right. You have to levy across okay. Okay. the rest of the uh, residents. So I always like to talk about where revenues come from, and uh, Town of Enfield uh, gets a, a fairly large portion of our operating revenues for the general fund. Minutes. From intergovernmental sources. Because we never reset the time code. The okay. State of Connecticut. Thanks. And so unfortunately, if the state of Connecticut has uh, designs on reducing what our, our allotment is, it does have a major impact. And for the last, let's say, five years, there's always been at this point in time in the year the threat that they're going to be reducing our allotment. And that kind of equates to around $34 million in about $33.6 uh, dollars and cents. But um, again, we're hearing that that is a possibility that we should be prepared for. So, um, you know, what council ultimately adopts could be adjusted dramatically if they decide to uh, cut off any of the funding that they're currently giving us. And unfortunately, they got their budget after ours, so we don't but uh, hopefully that won't happen in the church. Uh, the majority of our revenues comes from taxes. We lobby on uh, houses, farms, businesses, personal property, as well as vehicles. This year, uh, the, the mill, which everybody always wants to know, what, what is one mill equal to? This year, uh, one mill is equal to $2,826,190. In total, we're estimating revenues of a little over $125 million. And how does that get spent? Well, it gets spent two different ways. One, what we call the town side, and the other is the Board of Education a lot. And uh, this year, the town allotment is going to be upward to $59 million, where the Board of Education allotment is going up to $65 million, So now just focusing on the town side budget, which is from here on out we're talking about, the uh, general fund expenditures are broken down into a number of, of different ways. Uh, the largest single department that we have that expends money is public works. And uh, if you had seen the uh, presentation that uh, the DPW director given to the town council, you see, I think the number was this year upward of $40 million, I believe. $49 million is the actual expenditure when you look at all the different capital projects that are happening at the same time as what uh, the general operation fund is going through. And generally, they're out of the general fund, that's about a $17 million operation. But then the next uh, highest is public safety, so that's police. That's dispatchers, that's school security, emergency management. And then again, you see it broke down with transfers where we're sending money out to the social services fund, EMS fund, uh, recreation fund, as well as IT and uh, capital improvements. And general government so generally takes in town manager, council, finance, uh, those type of uh, expenditures. Oh, I'm hearing voices, I don't know why. The, uh, but the general fund is not the only fund that the town has. Uh, we also have, uh, as I said earlier, EMS, social services, IT, and recreation. And this graph here uh, kind of shows what the current year budget expenditures are versus the proposed, and the uh, smaller, uh, right here, the smaller, column represents what the general fund commitment is as a uh, percentage or as a dollar value of the total expenditure. And EMS has a little bit of a decrease. Uh, I did receive uh, a comment or a question from a resident about, you know, how is that decrease going to impact EMS? Well, the answer is it's not going to impact EMS because what we took out of that, primarily the big drop in that, 
was how we paid for the ambulances, and we took it out of that operational account and we moved it over to the CIP for the vehicle replacement. Account. So that's really what that decrease is. Social services, uh, this year we have uh, a fairly significant increase, but that's part of one of our initiatives that we are doing this year that uh, primarily is focusing on hiring for social workers as well as a part-time educator trying to uh, address some of the, the needs within the community that we're seeing a lot of uh, a lot of areas that, that with this additional staffing will help improve the overall community and uh, working into the schools as well and providing additional uh, social services there. Information technology again it shows a little bit of an increase. Primarily uh, that increase is coming from uh, capital purchases that will happen as part of the school uh, side budget. But uh, it shows up as we put all those costs uh, within the one fund for information technology. And recreation, for the most part, is, is about the same level as it was last year. Starting actually in, in this year, uh, we are fully uh, self-funded within the uh, sewer. And the sewer we hear is WPCA, Water Pollution Control Authority. And even though if you go to a WPCA authority meeting, you see the same 11 people that you see as town council. Um, that's just how it works out uh, here in Enfield, that council doubles their duty as a Water Pollution Control, uh, control Authority. But uh, starting with uh, the current fiscal year, 100% of the funding comes from the users of the sewer system. And so looking at it, uh, the budget uh, this year compared to last year shows a decrease. It's not really a decrease from the operational side because uh, in the current year we had, I want to say, a little over $600,000 in uh, capital that's coming from the state who is funding a couple of our uh, uh, planning functions we have to do for the upcoming project, which is the total, uh, total upgrade of our facilities at the water pollution control. The good thing is, I guess long term, that the funding for the uh, upgrades is already in place. So we're not anticipating the need to come back to the residents and ask for more money within the WPCA. It's self-funded, pays for all the things that we're looking for. It's also repaying the general fund loan that uh, because the operations in previous years were not balanced, um, we had to take money from the general fund to balance it out. But how the uh, user fee is set up allows us to pay that over 20 years. Uh, the 2016 capital improvement program, we're uh, allotting $3.3 million for our capital needs. Uh, some of the things that are going to be done, uh, they talked about the vehicle replacement plan, $1.6 million for that. Uh, upgrades to school facilities and security, parking lot uh, construction, uh, village center uh, repainting, Groves 2015 commitment, uh, town owned facility repairs and improvements, place gate replacements, and the purchase of uh, various equipment for public works. So a uh, very uh, big schedule of things to be happening for the next uh, year if this gets approved. Then some of the things that the fiscal year 2016 budget does, again, just talking about the town side, uh, it requires requests the addition of a second uh, electrician for building the grounds, which will give us the ability to uh, bring in-house the repair and maintenance of all the street lights, as well as allow us to catch up in some of our electrical uh, work that we've been putting off uh, across facilities. Uh, again, we talked about the enhancement of services related to creating healthy families and safe, vibrant communities uh, initiative that the social services director has unveiled, um, which equates to a part time parent educator and four social workers impact on the budget. Uh, parking lot constructions for the Angelo Romagna Activity Center, as well as for the Hazardville Institute. Uh, as I said earlier, the painting of the Thompsonville Village Center, 
and uh, funding of the vehicles on the replacement schedule for this year. And all this is done uh, with an increase, uh, need is an increase in the uh, mill rate. And this chart can give you that historical perspective going way back to the year 2000 on what the mill rates are. So my proposed budget right here uh, is asking for a mill rate of uh, 30.34 per thousand. That's uh, an increase over the current, which is 29.13. And you kind of see uh, this graph kind of shows you the different years of rebound as well. You know, right here is the oops, sorry about that, is the change in from one rebound to the next. You had the same the same. Here's the next rebound here in 2013. It take, took effect, and uh, we're going to be in 2016, 17. The 2016 is the next one. So this will be adjusted again. So we're going to have these resets every uh, five years. I always like to do a little bit of comparison with our fellow towns in uh, Connecticut. And uh, right here in the middle is Enfield, what the proposed rate is. And if there's an asterisk next to the town, that means that's a proposed. The rest are all actually uh, fiscal year 2015 numbers. I like can find what their proposals are for those right off the top of my head. So uh, you kind of see that we're really right in the middle. Our <clears throat> towns that are above the town of Enfield are towns that offer similar type services and the variety and scope of services where the towns generally beneath Enfield are those that offer fewer type services like the town of Enfield. And as you can see that again, we're on the lower end of the full service communities and at the upper end of those uh, communities that aren't full service. And finally, uh, the last slide to talk about our unassigned fund balance. And this is a very important uh, graph to keep in mind. Uh, we have a unwritten policy that we try to keep somewhere between 9 and 12% of the fund balance that is unassigned in the general fund, unassigned, which means it's there. And if we need it, we can use it. Um, coming out of the recession, if we were actually out of the recession, in 2012, you kind of see where we uh, got the lowest point for us. But uh, this year, at the end of 2014, uh, we're starting to uh, see you know, the peak where we kind of want to be long term, a little bit higher possibly as well. And this is very important, and I know council is fully aware of this, is when we start talking about the debt we're going to be issuing over the next few years for the roads project, for the um, school project, the credit rating agencies which we're right now talking to for the next issuance, um, like to see a good fund balance. And this is a very strong cash and financial position for the town of Enfield which will hopefully keep our credit rating the same as what it is, which is a very strong position for us, and which means lower interest rates, which means savings over 20 years of a lot of money. And so uh, right now, we're going to be peaking a little bit over 16 million, right around 16 million in unassigned fund balance. Uh, the projection is just looking at what the current revenue, or what was budgeted for revenue, what was budgeted for expenditures, and what was budgeted for the use of fund balance to balance those two out for the current year, um, which is 700,000. If we spent all that money, you know, we'd be down a little bit into the $15 million range. So again, a very strong position for us, something that we we off on a constant basis and try to keep up there. Just to make people aware that find all the documents that uh, were presented to council, my budget presentation, the uh, department presentations, uh, this presentation as well, can all be found on our website. There is a budget uh, uh, page over there, and you go there, you'll be able to find all this information. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Matt. Thanks for your presentation. So we'll move to uh, the community conversation portion. So, and Lori Ungeyer, who just arrived, she's a member of the board. Lori, you're, you're, you're 
free to come on up to the to the front if you so wish, or or you can stay in back. It's, not, it's entirely up to you. <coughs> Ray wants company. Um, what's that? All right, um, folks from the community, just raise your hand. I'll call on you and come on up again to the uh, to the podium. There is no time limit. We ask you to come on up. Uh, state your name and address for the record. Got a particular question? Feel free to, to state the question, direct the question to uh, either council, board, or staff members in the audience. Will do. Welcome, Jen. Thanks. Uh, Jennifer Moncus, I live at 17 Booth Road. And my question is, the intergovernmental um, income of roughly $34 million that comes from m mostly the state, as I understand, is that um, funding directly related to education, or is that funding that can be more, that is more broadly than that? Yeah. Or use this one, it's really good. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't well, have the buzz that that one very, does. Very, very, very good. <clears throat> so uh, out of that 34 odd million dollars, uh, about 29 million plus goes to school. So that money is passed right on to the right. Board of Education. And so there's about three plus million dollars that uh, is the state reimbursement to the town for pilot you know, uh, payments in lieu of taxes for where you know state property is. Uh, our share of uh, casino money that comes in um, and a, a number of miscellaneous other type okay. of uh, grants we get. But the majority of it go, is, is directed toward education? The vast majority of it, yeah. So here's my question. If the state has a rescission and doesn't, as there is some fear, perhaps not expectation, but fear that there may be, would the town, I mean, would the town have to defer that difference? Or is that a much bigger conversation? Do you want me to take that one? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, that becomes a political fellow council members can weigh in. So the way I understand it is if funding from the state remains flat, mm -hmm. there typically is a uh, legislation passed by the legislature every year called minimum budget requirement. Mm -hmm. And that typically gets tucked into the budget bill and it states um, municipalities who receive state aid and pass it on to the schools needs to give no less than what was given in the past. Now, for years, we haven't seen a reduction in state aid to mm -hmm. education. So it, it only impacts on the education side. So what will, would have to be a decision by the council is if they reduce, and, and just say offhand, they reduce that by a million dollars. So instead of 29, they pass on 28. And the state would probably then not pass that minimum budget requirement component in their bill because they've reduced aid. So then the council could be free to reduce by a million in that hypothetical scenario. Right. Um, so we have to wait and see, and we probably won't know prior to that. Right, that's my understanding. So, you know, we're going to be adopting the budget mid-May. And chances are the state won't know, so we'll have to work off of what we currently know and anticipate today. Okay. Um, state has been very consistent in at least level funding state aid to municipalities. That's what the governor's budget is today. Anything different would just be a guess. Okay. So what I've I've heard from some of our le one or two of our state legislators and in other work that I do is that we probably won't have a state budget between before closer to the end of June. So um, we'll have our town budget in effect or adopted by the middle of May. So if there were changes to what we expect from the state, would we have to go kind of revisit? I'm just not familiar Which, with what that process is. I don't think we can, correct, Matt? Well, it, it the answer is it depends. Um, I want to say it was about uh, three or four years ago. The state actually didn't adopt the budget until it was after July. I think it was August, and uh, they had written into the uh, 
the legislation adopted it, the ability for towns to go back. The, the reality, though, is that if, if it's not passed by June, mid-June mid mm -hmm. latest, you know, we're already starting to prepare the tax bills for July 1st. Right. And, and so if, if it's passed after July 1st, it's going to be very difficult for council to go back and say, okay, now we have to raise taxes. I mean, they could do that. It could be a supplemental increase. But that's a lot, a lot, and a lot. I mean, and so I, I would assume that you know, we're going to have to look at how to reduce the budget to do that. And, and again, I think council, not speaking for any member of council, but, but I think you know, they, would, they would try not to uh, negatively impact operational budgets you know, there is a sizable amount of capital that you know, under the mayor's um, scenario that we probably, I would be recommending we look at first. But again, that's assuming it's a million dollar hit. Right. You know, a, a potential scenario is could be a lot greater than that because the town of Enfield is one of the municipalities that receives a lot of state aid. You know, a 10% hit to the town of Enfield is $3.3 million, mm -hmm. where some towns that's like, you know, Three hundred thousand right. dollars. So it, it's all bets are off if they do that. Wait and see. Well, thank you very much. You've answered my question. Thank you, Jennifer. <laughs> Appreciate it. Tom. I have a couple questions. Um, one that I just thought of is. Hey, Tom. We can have, you just for the well, record? Tom Walsh, Roseanne Street. Thank you, Tom. Um, when we had the charter open, why didn't we move when we approve our budget? To later on, to when we know that the that the state would have a budget, why why wasn't something like that done? You know, so that maybe we prove our budget in August. And well, I was you were part. You want to take it? So, I, I was, and anyone else, please feel the uh, one of the council liaisons to charter revision, and I know they looked at everything, but our fiscal year begins July one. Mm -hmm. And so really the schedule that we have today is really tight to even a July 1 fiscal year. Um, now, conceptually, maybe you could change our fiscal year to January 1. Um, I don't know if we could. But it was already tight window, uh, you know, just to the point of preparing tax bills and getting first. The decision to leave it the same but it leaves us in this quagmire constantly we don't know what the state's going to give us and and maybe state statute needs to change I know there's a lot of people calling on the legislature to say hey look you need not fair municipality have a, a July one it's not fair to the state um, either and uh, everyone's up to the wire may require state legislation to actually change I think that really definitely needs to be looked into because I hear this every year well we're gonna pass our budget but we don't know what the state's gonna give us and and let's face it our state you know I, that's not where I was going but <laughs> um, and and as far as as far as the school system I don't don't misunderstand me I'm not anti school system and I don't want to you know be the gray-haired guy that brings us up, but if we're being flat-funded by the state, why why aren't we flat-funding the school? I mean, if if the state can't afford to give us more money, then how can you expect us to give you more money? I mean, I, that's just my my look at it. It's not it, it's not that I I don't want to pay, but this is the way we pay in this town, or we pay in this whole whole state. It's it's an unfair system. Okay, if you got a house that's appraised at, or assessed at seventy-eight thousand, and you know you pay whatever less than three grand in taxes, and then you got people in this town. I mean, I'm lucky. I'm kind of in the middle. I pay forty-five hundred dollars a year for taxes. I don't really use any services and except for the garbage. Um, but uh, I know people that pay over ten thousand dollars a year for taxes. So this. Everybody's screaming, oh, we need to give more money, we need to give more money, but this tax increase is different on everybody in this town. You know, for one person, it's 50 bucks. For another person, it's 400 or 500. 
So, I, I mean, it, and, and the other thing is, is the state, I mean, the town is merging the two high schools. Okay, and we're supposedly we're space, supposed to spend, save all kinds of money with this. We're going to be moving, we won't need as many teachers because, you know, you're going to have kids merging together and everything. Supposedly, I don't know. But um, why don't we wait till then before we keep uh, up in the budget? I mean, we pay the administrators a lot of money. Give them what they give them and let them figure it out. You know. And then there was another thing. I, I read in the paper, and I don't know how true this is, but I saw you were going to go up 800 grand or something on the uh, social services for mental health. Uh, they took that away from my own health insurance a few years back, and now I'm going to pay for other people to have it um, in my taxes. And then I saw something about parenting classes. Are you guys kidding me? We're going to teach parenting classes now with our tax dollars. I mean, I, I kind of got a thing. I got a problem with that because, again, you know, I, I'm, I'm 62 years old. I'm going to retire in four years. I was hoping to retire now, but it's not going to work out. And in four years, the taxes are going to be worse. I never planned on still being here. When my kids grew up, I was heading south, but I got all kinds of grandkids in this town and another town, a couple of other towns. And uh, so I'm stuck here because my wife ain't leaving. All right. So now I got to look, I got to watch out for not only like, I think about the older people in this town around fixed income, you know. Every time you, you, you know, the taxes went up the last four years, plus the sewer bills. You know, some people, they don't get that extra money, so they got to do without something. So if we got to do without something, then the school system needs to do it. Maybe the town needs to do without something. You know, uh, I, I just, I think you guys really need to keep that in mind when you, when you pass this budget. You know, it's, like I said, the tax increase on one person is not the same on another. You know, and, and, and again, parenting classes? I may not have been the best parent, but nobody taught me how to be a parent. And I've really got a problem with paying somebody else. They probably shouldn't have kids to teach them parenting classes. But anyways, like I said, keep in mind that you've got a lot of people in this town that are older, and this is going to put a hurting on them. Thank, Thank you, Tom. Anyone want to address any of his comments? Thank you, Tom. Anyone else? Anyone else? Yes, come on up. Oh, go ahead, Donna. Yeah. But come on up. Hi, Tom. Hi. <laughs> you know, Tom, we're probably in the same situation. You know, you, you come to this town and you grow down roots and now you're not going to move and you're trying to find the best way. And I know I sit here and I sat on Board of Ed and I found the most frustrating thing was every year that all municipal and public employees get a 2% raise. And when we give those raises, they're, they're pushed by the unions, they're pushed by everybody else. They say it's a cost of living adjustment, but the rest of people don't necessarily get that 2%. And I think over and over again, I see this, and the frustration is, is you don't want to take the programs away that make this town what people come here to live for. But yet, we're caught in the crossfire of how to keep everything, you know, stable. So I think the thing is, is to try to be patient with us and maybe, you know, look for ways that we can save money without cutting programs because every year we have a 2% raise that has to go to all our employees. Thank you. Thanks, Donna. Sure, Tom. You can do a follow-up. Oh, oh. Go right ahead. No. No, I, I understand everybody gets a 2% raise, but, I mean, in, in where I work, we had a guy, a, a man pass away. I got some of his work. So, you know, in the real world, or in the, in the outside world, of, other than in, in union education and, and the town, you know, when we went to school here, I don't remember what my class size was, especially in high school, it was kind of, don't remember much of it, but in grade school, our classes were high. Our, our class sizes were high. I went to Cashew School when it was plastic hanging in a hallway, and we went the, the, double, uh, the double classes. So, I mean, if they want more money, that's fine. More work. 
You know, do we need all kinds of department chairs that don't te need teach classes? I mean, I don't know. I don't know how the school system works. I just hear bits and pieces from what I hear from other people. And, you know, I know some people are pro this and some people are pro this. So I don't know what to believe on, on the other end. But I hear we have department chairs that don't teach classes. Do we need them? I mean, we're, do, we need, do we need people to teach teachers how to teach? I heard we have, we have that kind of thing that goes on too. They went to college. You should have learned there. You know, I, I mean, again, I'm not anti-education. But again, it, you, you can't just keep raising taxes. This system doesn't work, all right? This whole thing is gonna, is gonna crash sooner or later. Because you can't keep raising taxes on people. And everybody says, well, if you don't like it, move them. Family, move it. You can't afford for me to move. Because if I sell my house and I put the walls back up, and right now it's a one and a half bedroom house. But I put the walls back in places, four bedrooms. You can have a family of four, five, six kids in there. It's cheaper to have me here. So you should probably keep that in mind. And a lot of other people with gray hair, it's cheaper to have us here. And, 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 and to keep that, you just have to keep that in mind because, you know, it, once, once we retire, I mean, I, I, I'm going to be living on Social Security. Between, between my, I, we've, we're, not, not to keep going on, but just between my taxes now and what my car and homeowner's insurance is, I'm at, I'm at about nine, uh, eight, almost eight grand, right off the top. That's before heat, electricity, food, you know. And that's another thing to keep in mind. I'm sure there's a lot of people in this town retired a long time ago that these ta tax increases take food off the table. So thank you very much. Thanks, Tom. <coughs> Good evening. Uh, Bethany Olette, 24 Betty Road. Um, okay, I believe you had broken out the budget for the town was 59 million plus, and the Board of Ed was 65.8. Um, what portion of that 65.8 is town money? Because that's pretty much their entire budget, and we know the state's giving a good portion of that. So what portion of it is actually town taxpayer money? It would be the 65.8 minus the 29. So that wouldn't include so, any so grants 30, that's 30 in the Board of Ed right now as far as their breakdown of grants? No. That's not in there. So it would be just the 29 for the state would right. be minus out, and that would be the actual town responsibility, not 65. Okay. And so that number plus your 59.4, is that what you based your mill rate calculation on? Way, the way that uh, you calculate the mill rate, uh, at least from my perspective, is you see what your expenditures are, you minus out the non-tax revenues, so you know the state aid and fees and permits and all that. What's left is then the levy that you have to establish to pay for the rest of the services. Okay. And as far as if the Board of Ed does not approve the guards, where does that money go in the budget? The money's on the town side of the budget, and that would be a council decision at the time of adopting the budget. Okay. And I don't know if the Board of Ed members can answer this question as far as we saw increases for the town in health care and in pensions. Um, are we seeing the same type of increases for the Board of Ed to maybe explain why we need this money. That's why I brought the budget book. I can find it. The answer to your question is yes. We did take a hit on, on health care and on workers' comp, but uh, if I can find it, bear with me a minute. I'll tell you the difference. Short answer is yes. The answer is yes. We took a hit. Okay. And I just don't know where the heck I put it. And. While you're looking, of the 205,000 for school um, improvements, is that spread amongst all the public schools? Um, is any of that going to the parochial schools? 
Okay. Just no. Okay. Okay, Bethany, I have your answer. Okay. On health care, we originally had a uh, almost a one million one point two million dollar increase over the uh, from last year by work reworking the uh, numbers with the uh, insurance people. We actually ended up only coming up uh, maybe a few hundred thousand dollars. So okay. we managed that. On workers' comp, we ended up uh, having almost a million dollar difference. And again, working with the town, we brought that down. That money's already been reduced down into the budget proposal. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Bethany. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Hi, Trisha Wright, 66 Oakwood Street, and I don't have a question. I just have a blanket statement that, while I appreciate that the Board of Ed's um, budget has a big old bullseye on it, I'm hoping that when you all sit down and look at the budget that it's looked at evenly. That's all I'm asking, that, and that it's just a fair cuts, if you will, across the board and not just Board of Ed. Thank you. Thanks, Trisha. Jen? Yeah, my name is Jessica. Yes, please. I'm still Jennifer Moncuse at 17 Booth Road. Um, and this is really more a question for the Board of Ed, I think. Um, so if you guys know the answer, that'd be great. But am I correct in my understanding that if the Board of Ed was flat funded um, at the same dollars that they had gotten last year, that that would in effect mean that programs and things had to be cut because there are increases in costs? Well, first of all, we're not flat funded this year. Uh, no, we no. Have, we I have know. an increase of 1.6 mil on the mm -hmm. table right now from the town manager. Um, so that's where that's at. Right now we're going through the budget, still working on it, to see what else we can take that's non-program effective. So it should not affect programs mm -hmm. and staff and class sizes. We're not done yet. We still have a ways to go. Does that answer your question? Well, I think my question was really um, more for um, sort of public edification, if you will, that if, if, we, if, if the town of Enfield gave, um, appropriated the same amount of money to, board it to education as it appropriated last year, that that would in effect be a decrease in what they would have available to spend because of increased expenses. That is true. Okay. But they're not doing it. Right. Okay. Um, and then also, I really miss the LEAF service. Just wanted Matt, to put that out there. It's on you. <laughs> Just want to really miss that one. <laughs> Thank you. Jennifer, I agree. <laughs> I love just raking them out to the curb. Yeah. I, I live with it. And, it. and I think when it was eliminated, it saved about $200,000 a year. That was a budget reduction. Yeah. And a safety and a avoidance of a mess and all that that happened all over the place. Yeah. Anyone else for the first time or the second time? Very good. Thank you very much. May I have a motion to adjourn by Deputy Mayor Lee, seconded by Councillor Denny. All those in favor? Those opposed? We are adjourned. Have a good evening.